Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Ascendant. Ascendant is a roguelike, new generation roguelike, roguelite. It's a roguelikeish beat em up, procedural death labyrinth. Uh, I really like how we've simplified that genre name by instead adding like nine, nine modifiers that need to be added before you discuss it. But in any case, you know, it's a game with, uh, you know, procedurally generated rooms, randomized loot, and permadeath. So, you know, you play it, you die, you start again. Think of it as kind of similar to The Binding of Isaac. Think of it as kind of similar to... I'm uh, just going to turn the music here. Think of it as kind of similar to uh, Spelunky, but this one has a little bit more of a uh, beat-em-up vibe associated with it. So it's almost like a, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time meets The Binding of Isaac. That's how I'll build it. I've played about an hour of it so far, and I like it. I, I would go so far as to say that this is probably um, my favorite roguelike-ish game of the year so far, and I hope I'm not leaving- Man, FTL Advanced Edition I do prefer, um, b but, uh, you know, compared to something like Our Darker Purpose, which I guess maybe came out last year, uh, I, I like this a lot more. It's not perfect, there's a little bit of, uh, some jank to it, if you will, but I definitely think that people who are interested in the genre will, uh, find enough of a novelty in the kind of new mechanics and, uh, enough meat in the actual game itself to get their money's worth at $10 and, uh, you know, 10% extra off for their opening week sale. So the way that the game is divided up is, uh, you know, similar to Floors in The Binding of Isaac or similar to, uh, uh, you know, levels in Spelunky or something along those lines, uh, where there's a boss every single time, there's some, uh, loot that you can find and, uh, there's shops, etc., etc. Um, you're probably more or less familiar with the formula now. The thing that is different with the game is that instead of being, you know, a twin stick shooter or an action platformer, although this is kind of an action platformer, um, this is much more of a, uh, a beat em up style, so almost like a, a, a shank type thing going on here. So, we have a few different things that we can actually accomplish here. Now that we've started, uh, I actually am going to turn this stuff up just a little bit. Sorry, the audio balance may be a little bit funky. Alright, that seems a little bit more suitable. Uh, this guy is still alive, we can tell based on our map. So you finish a room, uh, when all the enemies are dead, the doors open up and sometimes you also get a chest. This chest gave us a little bit of HP. If you look up in the top left, uh, our health is represented, represented by those hearts. It has kind of like a Central American or, you know, Mesoamerican kind of art style associated with a very, like, American tribe-like, if that makes sense. Um, our mana is represented by that blue bar just below it, and then uh, on the left side there's keys, and then uh, I believe it's influence. Influence is our, or inspiration maybe, it's one of the two. That's our money, basically, that we will use to uh, go to shops. So, for mana, uh, let's just talk about our attacks quickly. Our mana is used to cast spells. Right now we have um, just this standard kind of like, you know, shoot an arrow spell. I'm using uh, the controller, but there is a keyboard and mouse uh, configuration, as you might expect, given that this is a PC game as well. I just prefer to use the controller for beat-em-ups like this. We also have, you know, our standard, uh, you know, X attack, uh, which is quick. And then we have a launcher attack, which is mapped to Y here, which we can use to knock stunned enemies into other en en enemies, which does a lot of damage, you know, standard kind of beat-em-up trope. Uh, apart from that, there's also some other, like, heavy attacks that we can do, but I can't really... Uh, do those just yet. We need to actually get some loot here. So, we can get new weapons, so, you know, it's not necessarily like the Binding of Isaac, where, you know, your tears, or, you know, in rare cases, something like Mom's Knife or Brimstone are gonna be your major weapon of choice. Uh, we can find new weapons in chests like this one. We might get lucky and find one right away. Oh, we actually need a key to unlock this one, so hopefully we'll be able to get one. Uh, really cool art style. I do think the animations, and, uh, particularly the animations in, in combat, sometimes look a little bit not perfect. That being said, for the most part, I think uh, the, the game does a very good job uh, of handling things from an audio-visual level. And the combat, for the most part, is good. Now, we also do have a parrying function, so I could hit that guy into um, his uh, friend over there, but I wanted to parry them instead, because that's usually a one-hit KO, at least early. So it is influence, not uh, inspiration, as mentioned earlier. We'll try to get a key and open that chest. We might be able to find a shop. As far as I know, there is not a shop on every single floor, but I'm still very much getting used to the... Um, you know, the actual, you know, roguelike elements that are going on here. First floor, usually relatively easy. The game's divided up into seasons as opposed to just saying, you know, this is level one, this is level two. So there's more influence for us. There's another door that we can unlock. Uh, just like in Isaac, you know, the rooms have a, um, you know, an icon on the mini-map that explains what they are. I don't totally know what those icons necessarily are yet, though. So, it's very important, uh, parrying and, uh, hitting staggering, or staggering enemies and then hitting them into other enemies, super important. Because it's usually a one-hit KO, which is extremely useful for taking out other enemies. Uh, when they get a yellow outline around them, that means they're staggered. So let's just jump up here, and I believe this is the last enemy available here. And then we might have our boss room after that. These floors are usually pretty small. You know, it is a little bit of a button masher, at least early on, or when you only have one enemy left. Um, but that's okay. We got armored health, which is basically just a, you know, more difficult version of, of HP that's hard to uh, have enemies take away from us. 
At the end of the level, we fight a boss. The bosses give me a little bit of a... Oh, that was really bad of me. Bosses give me a little bit of a, an R Darker Purpose vibe. This is uh, the Maw. Oh my god, I should not be taking this much damage because, you know, you don't get fully healed after your boss fight, so it's uh, a little risky to be taking as much damage as I am taking here. Uh, the Maw's pretty tricky. There's two bosses that I've fought so far here, and uh, after talking with Total Biscuit, who has played the game uh, a little bit longer than I have, he says there's only two bosses that, uh, I guess, typically spawn at this point. So we're going to try to parry these guys because it's an instant KO and this will make it easier for us to sneak through this area good. Um, yeah, so there's the Maw and then there's this boss which is like a dude in a tower. The dude in the tower is much, much easier to kill. One thing I will bring up as a, a negative of the game so far is compared to something like, say, the Binding of Isaac, having uh, only two boss choices per floor does take a little bit of the variety out and I could totally understand um, or totally fathom that maybe... Oh, that was really bad of me. Um, it, it, maybe it would be easy to reach a point in the game uh, where you've just got such familiarity with the bosses that it becomes a little bit easier than you would expect games of this ilk to normally be. That being said, I've had a good time with it so far, so we'll just parry these. You do get a little brief period of invincibility when you parry as well, which is why it's safe for us to come up there and do that. And we should be able to kill the Maw before he summons any more of those uh, asshole monsters anyway. The Maw, you know, you might be watching this and saying, is the Maw really the more difficult version of the bosses, because, or the boss that you could face on this floor? Uh, because he seems pretty easy right now. I assure you that I have just gotten very lucky. So after beating bosses, uh, this is one of the unique mechanics uh, involved in this game. You unlock a spirit, and by uh, basically going over to that spirit, it's a blessing. Blessing of Kamaho. So it says, we boarded our craft, my kinsman and I, with our pilot well-skilled Kamoho ally. I'm not sure if this is coming from, or drawing from, like, Incan or Aztec uh, civilization, but it certainly seems to be. And what's kind of neat is that, you know, this is not like your standard roguelite item. You know, this is not just like damage up or something like that, although those do appear. This is a little bit more mysterious, at least when you first start playing, so it's almost like we're, we have chakras or something here. We can either apply it to like our magical spell ability, we could apply it to our person, or we could apply it to our weapon. And you can see there's like one or two slots for each. The thing is, we don't know what it does until we experiment with it. Eventually we'll get enough discoveries, and we can check out our discoveries in the options menu, uh, where we will know what it does. So eventually, I think if you play for like 50 hours, you'll say, oh, Blessing of Komoho, that gives us extra HP if we put it inside of our body or something like that. Um, but for now, you just got to experiment and figure out what it does, and that leads to some cool customization. Alright, there you go. So, um, our discovery there is that uh, if we put it on our weapon, attacks can instantly slay weakened foes. Cool. As you can see, I've discovered 5 out of 21 blessings, 6 out of 60 definitions, because each uh, blessing is 3 definitions, depending on where you slot it in. We also have breaths, uh, which we haven't discovered many of. This is almost like a bomb in like a space shooter context. Once our jar at the top gets filled, we can unleash this to basically clear a room. Um, and, you know, there's other weapons and, and stuff like that. I've only seen one other weapon so far. Hopefully we uh, find some more over the course of this run. Well, after leaving the first floor, we unfortunately have zero keys, so we're not going to be able to open up any of those uh, special treasure chests or anything like that, but hopefully we'll get more in the future. The plight in The Binding of Isaac continues to be a plight in Ascendant as well. So yeah, overall my thoughts on this game are, are pretty solid so far. I haven't done fantastically, but uh, I, I do consider myself, you know, if, if I have high standards, come on, take a shot. If I have high standards in any genre, that was so bad. It's probably this genre that I have the highest standards in, you know, when, um... Uh, Our Darker Purpose came out, I was not a huge fan of it, and a lot of people thought I was being a little bit too hard on the game, and, and that's fine, you know, that's that's up to that's up to uh, you to decide whether or not you agree with my, my standards for games like this, but I think this one's pretty good, so it's almost my way of saying, like, I, I don't necessarily impress easily when it comes to this genre, so um, uh, I think maybe trust my word a little bit more than maybe you otherwise would, it's kind of weird to have to be like, no, seriously, I'm credible, but... Um, yeah, I, I think that that is not necessarily unreasonable. You can also, as you can see, hit pots in enemies, which is super important. Oh, Jesus. That is um, what our blessing did. So when that foe got weak, um, they actually got instantly slayed. Slain, I guess? And there's just a percentage chance to make that happen, which is nice, because I don't have to worry so much about finishing enemies off. Uh, I can just hit other enemies into them. Where were those? Oh, is this an enemy? What's going on with that red thing? I've never seen that before. That's horrifying. Um, maybe we can try using our, our magic to take it out. I mean, we could use our magic to take out these flies as well. Oh, I guess that was just a weird kind of summon. There we go, we got a key. 
why don't we use our key to come down into this area here? I will say that also sometimes I have some problems with navigation because it's not top down. That's not necessarily the game's fault. It could be my fault as well. But um, sometimes I have trouble seeing where like the bridges line up to take me from place to place. And I end up wandering for a little while. All right. So this is a shop. Uh, I guess that's I'll, I'll keep in mind. This is what that purple relic means. We have some things that we can buy here. We can buy lesser arcane volley. This is a spell. We don't have enough uh, inspiration for that or influence. Uh, we can buy Spirit of the Dragoon, which would basically give us another... Oh, no. Spirits are not blessings. This would give us um, maybe a breath, I think, that would go in that jar at the top. We could buy a whole heart or some armored health. And uh, with 25, I think I'm going to buy some... Yeah, maybe we'll buy a whole heart here. There you go. So I, I spent most of our uh, cash there, but I also managed to pick up a little extra HP, which maybe will make me a little bit more survivable. I have never beaten the boss on the second floor, so this would be a, a landmark moment for me if I was actually able to make it happen. Uh, I'm actually gonna crank up the volume even a little bit more. Normally, there's not nearly as much of a problem here, but I think I, I maybe got the uh, auto audio balance in the game wrong at first. Uh, or maybe I got it right at first and should have gotten it wrong. Uh, in any case, let's move upwards. That uh, bramble there or those thorns will actually uh, very much end up hurting me. Always best to use a parry if you can, because it makes it so much easier to kill enemies. And how do I feel about the game's difficulty so far? Because this is uh, obviously one of the hallmarks of a genre like this. Seems tough. Um, you know, I have... I probably should not be trying to parry enemies that are so easy to kill in other ways. Um, so far, it's been tough. I've, I've died a lot. Uh, my average life is somewhere along the lines of, uh, you know, maybe four to five minutes. Which is fairly typical of, you know, starting up a game like this uh, for its first try. So, um, it, it seems to nail it in that regard. You know, it's not... Uh, vict or it doesn't fall victim to what some games in this ilk actually do, which is like making it a little bit too easy at the start, and then you get bored with uh, you know it quickly because you figure it all out before you uh, really have a chance to feel like you've earned it. All right, so that was a good parry there. I, I do have the feeling that once you master the mechanics, it'll be you know much much easier. Not that that is necessarily like not a hallmark of the genre. I mean, once you master the Binding of Isaac or Spelunky, it becomes much much easier as well. This is the same boss that I fought before. Uh, and I did absolutely god-awful. So I think that what I'm supposed to do to do as much damage as possible is that... Ah, there we go. Uh, I want to... We, we also have a dodge that I didn't even mention. Um, yeah, I want to hit the enemies into the worm. And if I hit the enemies into the worm, it seems to do uh, an awful lot of damage. It looks like I also have to hit the specific bodily segments. Um, so we'll just... Oh, man. Try to make this work. It's a boss that's tricky to dodge, as you can pretty clearly see here. Oh, we actually got the kill there. I'm amazed that that actually worked out kind of nearly sight on scene. Let's see what our blessing is here. Um, blessing of Loki. So I think I've already put this in my weapon once, and you can see uh, attacks cause a localized earthquake. Sounds cool. Didn't really do too much for me. I'm going to put this inside of my body instead. Bestows increased dash length. All right. Seems like that'll be helpful defensively. I'm just happy to have made it out of this section of the game for the first time ever. So let's continue onwards. And I assume that we will be on early summer now uh, as we progress through the seasons. My guess might be, and you know, I'm not coming from a place of authority on this, that probably you... Um Oh, wow, it's really cool that there's a different visual style for every single level, too. It's, it's a really good-looking game. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, Outlast on the... Um Sorry, am I thinking of Outlast? No, Outlast is the horror game. I'm thinking of Outland on Xbox Live Arcade, which did have kind of these, um, you know, the Central American vibes going on in it as well. Man, I am getting pooped on here. Um, oh, okay, there we go. Thank God that worked. Now we can just use our spell to take this guy out. By the way, oh, I didn't manage this, uh, or I didn't uh, talk about this, explain this appropriately. Your mana replenishes, at least with this character, your mana replenishes, so... Um, just be careful here. Uh, you can use spells basically endlessly as long as you give yourself a chance to actually get that uh, mana back. So this guy should pop up out of the ground at some point. Where are you, my ground like fro? Oh, I impaled myself on the spikes. We'll do another run here and we'll try another run as a different character. So uh, I would really like it if we would unlock a new character. That life was actually 10 minutes long. You can see our stats here. Uh, blessing unlocked, the blessing of Shamash. Unlock a total of six blessing definitions. We also unlock a crystal mace. We can't use these unless we find them in the game. But, you know, you're constantly unlocking stuff. Um, they, you know, almost in a Binding of Isaac style. Um, although it's been forever since I've unlocked anything in that game, obviously. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, the game, the pool of items and, and blessings and, you know, breaths and spells, etc., etc. is constantly expanding. So, we can play, uh, to start with, we can play as either Memnon or Theseus. Now, Memnon is healthy, possesses no disadvantage. Uh, Theseus heals after slaying bosses, but is knocked back further. So we're going to try playing as uh, 
him or her. I've never played as Theseus before, so this should be uh, interesting at the very least. Healing after bosses seems very useful. useful. Health is pretty hard to come by in this game. At least from what I've seen so far. But yeah, you know, Ascendant, uh, it, it really tickles that, uh, like, rogue light ish ish uh, it, it feels a little bit Rogue Legacy-ish, but without, like, ooh, that's gonna explode. Um, without the, that was a sweet combo there. Without the, uh, like, permanent upgrades that you actually got in Rogue Legacy. Um, and I guess that enemy died as well, probably by impaling itself on the spikes. Let's see what we get here. Uh, interesting. Plus 5% to stagger damage. You find, uh, you know, passive augments like that fairly frequently in the game. Watch out for the Bramble up here. Just calling it Bramble because of the ridiculous amount of tower fall I played over the course of the year so far. I don't think that attack's gonna... Wow! I, that attack made it down there. I didn't think that would happen. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I'm not saying this is better or worse than Rogue Legacy, but what I will say is that um, it, it's, it feels more in the Rogue Light, whatever, PDL, whatever you want to call it, genre, um, than, than Rogue Legacy did, and uh, I appreciate that, even though I loved Rogue Legacy. I named it my second favorite game of the last year. So we did finally pick up a key. Get away from me. Oh, I still got hit by that. And it nearly killed me. Okay, so we start with a lot less total health here, um, which is pretty dangerous, but also... <gasps> oh, I thought I was going to get killed there, and I very nearly did, actually. Please give me some hearts. Uh, more keys. Okay. Well, we could go fight the boss, or we can come down to the shop. Uh, we can't really buy anything in the shop. I'm pretty sure we can't kill... Oh, we got some HP. Good. I'm pretty sure we can't kill shopkeepers either. I tried. I shot uh, one with spells. This is a tower guy, so we'll, uh, we'll fight Grunty. And he's got kind of a similar mechanic, and a sweet dance, uh, as the, uh, the worm boss that we fought earlier did. So basically, we're gonna try to, uh, hit him so much that we actually end up... Oh, that was really bad. That we actually end up tipping over and breaking the tower, and then we're just gonna hit enemies into him. And we should be able to, you know, finish the job pretty quickly here, although I, uh, oh, he heals the full after each boss fight. That's actually super useful. Okay. Let's see what we've got here in our, uh, treasure chest. That is the same blessing we had earlier, blessing of Loki. The earthquake thing was not very good. Um, oh, you know what? That one one two or one two two thing at the uh, opening screen. I was like killing myself trying to figure out what it meant. It means that you have one kind of like you know equip slot on your weapon, two on your body, and two on your spells. Let's try uh, equipping blessing of Loki on our spells. Spells last longer and bounce off of surfaces. All right, that seems like maybe the most useful um, kind of application of the blessing of Loki. Cool to know, I guess. Let's move onwards. I can feel myself start to get better. I didn't really finish my train of thought. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you like these kinds of games, if you like Rogue, if you liked Rogue Legacy, uh, if or if you like Rogue Legacy, I don't know why it has to be in the past tense. If you like the Binding of Isaac, I think ten bucks is a really good value for Ascendant. It seems like the kind of game that, at the very least, you know, you can get a. Why would I jump into that attack? Uh, at the very least, you can get a decent amount of uh, playtime out of. It's got some solid mechanics. I, I really like the parrying. Um, it's kind of a different style than than most games in this. Uh, uh, we'll try using spells here. Uh, than most games in this uh, vein, wouldn't you say? I mean, like, I'm not comparing this to Dark Souls necessarily, but it does have a little bit more of that Dark Souls is kind of like you know parry and repose type vibe to it, um, versus you know a twin stick shooter roguelike or you know um, Rogue Legacy had a little bit more of like a Castlevania thing going on going on with it. Um, and I think it's kind of a you know of of all the you know gimmicky roguelites that have been coming out lately. Not to say that that's a net positive or a net negative. Uh, this one feels uh, among the most interesting and meaningful to me so far. It's not perfect. Again, uh, sometimes the animations do feel a little janky. There are some times where I don't think the game necessarily looks perfectly. Boss variety seems kind of sorely lacking relative to a lot of its competition. Um, there is a way down. Have I already been there though? Um, but Despite that, I, I, I like it a lot. I, I found myself having a very good time with Ascendant, and uh, I think it's well worth the, the 10 bucks if you're a, a fan of the genre. Now. And in fact, I am, I'm contemplating doing a series on it. I just don't know if there's enough variety. I mean, not every series needs to be 800 episodes long, but uh, it would be nice to know that I wouldn't just, you know, beat it in two episodes. But, you know, maybe it would take me 100. Maybe that's how bad I am. Uh, we got plus 5 to spell damage, plus 5%, I should say. That's good, as is typical for games of this ilk. I think it's important to, if possible, um, finish off all of the rooms, just so we can have the best chance to get uh, as much one influence, really. Uh, just so we can have the best chance to get as many, you know, benefits as we possibly can. We'll see who our boss is. I really hope it's the same boss for once. It would be nice to get a different boss for variety's sake, but it would be nice to get the same boss, so I have, a you know, maybe an increased chance of winning. We got jump pads here. I think, you know, I, I probably glossed over that fact, but nice to know. 
I still don't use my spells as often as I should, especially considering they've been augmented. Good, we got a little extra health. I actually don't know what's in this room. It might just be a treasure chest. Prove your strength to Hachiman. Okay, so this is like a, um... It's, uh, like a challenge room, almost, it seems like. This is the first time I've encountered this in, like, 10 or 12 games so far. So we'll see if we have to kill, like, multiple waves of enemies. This first wave seemed relatively easy. I'm just bad. Okay, wave number two. Try using some spells here. We do have, a uh, increased spell damage. Oh, there's one dead. Watch out for this guy. He can be a little annoying. You're still alive? Oh, there you go. Please die. There we go. I imagine, you know, let's stick to the rule of threes here, right? We probably have three waves coming. Okay, this is wave number three. Oh, Lord. Um, this seems like kind of a boss here. Are these all gonna explode into other birds? Yes, I assume they are. That's how bird biology works. Okay, it is. it does get a little button mashy at times, too. I mean, a little repetitive in terms of combat. That's kind of like what you... Um, you know, get par for the course from the beat em up genre to begin with, I guess, though. Oh, okay, don't take more damage. Doing a pretty good job of knocking these things around, but uh, I've lost some HP in the process as well. Hey, there we go. Hatchman is pleased. Unwavering curved blades. We got a new weapon. I like that it shows you how easily um, the stats compare as well. So we start with Theseus's Notch Sword. It uh, gives us plus 10 bleeding damage. Plus, you know, it's, it's raw stats. We get more damage, more stagger damage, slightly slower swing time. A uh, plus five chance to auto parry and attacks no longer flinch you. That seems super awesome. So we got a new discovery as well. And we'll just figure out how to leave this room. Again, sometimes a little difficult for me to see where we're supposed to go. But it's pretty sweet that we're able to get a new weapon. And I like that there's such a high degree of, um, you know, variety in the game. You're not just using the same weapon as the same character all the time. Or, you know, every character doesn't specifically only use one kind of weapon. You can find equipment in the level as well. The one, like most obvious negative I can offer is that, you know, the lack of um, boss variety, which you're kind of seeing firsthand here, not that necessarily, you know, two um, boss fights necessarily, you know, dictates that there's not very many bosses in the game, but from what I've experienced so far, there's, there is a little bit of a, a sorely lacking uh, variety in bosses, but for, compared to its, you know, genre competitors, but apart from that, um, very impressed with the game so far. I am nearly dead, should be a little cautious. Should probably try to actually pay attention to where we should hit the boss, and we totally made it work, actually. Now we just gotta not die against these guys. Pick up some extra influence, we heal back to full, and... We end up getting uh, the Blessing of Loki again. I mean, I guess we'll stack these on our spells. Yeah, so we got... Um, uh, spells lasting even longer, maybe bouncing even further, or maybe I just completely wasted that. Who knows? Uh, the earthquake effect on the weapons didn't seem very useful to me, but I might be mistaken. So yeah, we'll just continue playing. I think I've said my piece on Ascendant, but um, let's, let's start playing in the early summer here and maybe I'll actually be able to string together a decent run. You always start in a room with two pots, and I have seriously never actually um, found those pots to be worthwhile. I have never found anything inside of them. So considering our extra spell damage... Come on, you can parry this. Come on, you can parry this. There we go. Considering our, our extra spell damage, I think I would be stupid to not use spells a little bit more often. Um, but it is just easier to kind of get in there sometimes and finish the job. What do we got here? Uh, extra stagger damage? Yeah, plus 5% to stagger damage. Okay, seems relatively useful. This enemy starts with a shield. That is annoying. How are we going to get through that? I guess we wait for them to attack, break the shield, and then just go to town. Now, uh, there are some flies down here. Or, I don't even know if you would call them flies. You know, they look like the weird duck monsters from Adam's Family on Super Nintendo. I know that's maybe a reference that is lost on most people. It's a good game, though. You should check it out. We can do a little bit of, you know, air juggling here, I suppose. Don't fall on the spikes, you big dummy. As in most games of this ilk, it's a pretty deadly proposition when that happens. That's uh, plus 10 to max mana. That's pretty useful. And what do we have down here? A free treasure chest, which gives us... Breath of Balor summons the Eye of Balor. So I can actually show off uh, what breaths are. These are the bombs that I was talking about earlier that basically, you know, you can use them once per, um, or one one time use only. Uh, but after, after you use them, it does a, a ton of damage. So hopefully, maybe we'll try it out in this room because I could be dead soon anyway. Um, maybe, I, I guess I have to give myself like an appropriate amount of time to actually cast it. Let's do this. That is not, that was a taunt. Ah, oh, there we go. So it's actually the, a different button. That's totally my mistake. 
Got some extra health there, and now we have this thing following us around. Uh, it, it probably will only last for one room, but it's doing a pretty darn good job of what it does. And now it's gone forever, I think. Or maybe it sticks with us, now it's gone forever. Ten influence. I have not gotten them very often, so hopefully you can forgive me for maybe not necessarily... Uh, being super in tune with what they actually do. There's another free treasure chest up here, lucky me. And we get another sword. Feathered Razor, less damage, greater swing time. Uh, or like lesser swing time, which is a good thing. Uh, less stagger damage. It seems pretty bad. It lowers player gravity, which means, yeah, I can jump further. Um, but I want to trade back. I just wanted to make that new discovery. Uh, that weapon seems a little bit worse than the weapon that I currently have going for me. So we only have 26 influence, but I want to pick up uh, whatever's in here anyway. What do we got? Uh, it's just a free trip to the shop. Okay. Um, we have a breath we can't buy. Whole heart we can buy. Spirit we can't buy, and spell we can't buy. So we'll just buy this heart. Should probably pick it up before we leave, and then we'll move onwards and maybe get a chance to actually fight the boss on this floor. But I will say that I'm getting a little bit turned around here. I think we're supposed to go down, maybe to the right. Maybe like a, a room outlined in white a little bit means that uh, we haven't been there. I'm going to go ahead and assume that that is probably pretty likely. Oh, I gotcha. I hope that he is. No, he's not dead. The shield still exists. That's annoying. It's okay, though. He'll be dead soon. And if we just hit enemies into other enemies, that's the easiest way to kill them that I've found so far. Pick up another key, and it looks like we're going over to the right. Floor size does seem to get a little bit bigger. We can just, like, pretty much perpetually juggle these things. That was a bad example of that, but I've done it in the past. Um, so let's see if we can use this flying enemy. Like, the game is a tooltip, which is basically, like, flying enemies are usually the best to take out, as opposed to, um, ground enemies, at least to start with. Wonder if we can just, like, totally knock all these guys straight up. Oh, I got killed. That was really stupid of me. I wasn't paying attention to my health at all, and was button mashing like a total idiot. In any case, though, uh, that's Ascendant. We survived for another ten minutes that time. I still have no idea how to actually, uh, unlock new characters, but the game's a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, check it out on Steam. Ten bucks, nine dollars for its opening week sale. Uh, and there is a link in the video description below, of course, on a personal level. If you enjoyed the video, Click the like button, it helps out a great deal, and of course subscribe if you want to see more first impressions in the future, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.